Well, brothers and sisters, as Paul says, I'm starting to take it personally now. They're closing fire stations where I worked and slashing of cover where I now live. And you know, on the night before the general election, David Cameron actually went to a fire station in Carlisle. It's a great photo opportunity, isn't it? Patting the firefighters on the back, looking at their BA sets and so on. And he said something there, he said, we've got to protect frontline services. And I say this to Cameron, you've got no mandate for destroying the fire service up and down the UK. And I say to Boris Johnson, you've got no mandate for destroying the London Fire Brigade. And I say to Ron Dobson, you've got no mandate to destroy the service that you built your career on the back of. Look at the scale of the cuts up and down the country. We did a survey just before Christmas and up and down the country, in London, in West Yorkshire, South Yorkshire, all over the place, up to 70 fire stations facing closure as a result of austerity based cuts driven by central government and imposed by local fire and rescue authorities. So much for protecting frontline services. You don't get much more frontline than frontline fire stations and they're threatened under the, under the uh, austerity that we're facing. And I heard Ron Dobson on the telly saying, we're still going to meet our targets. Well, isn't that the case that they actually set their own targets? When I joined the London Fire Brigade in 1983, in vast parts of London, you had to have a fire engine in five minutes, in five minutes, and in eight minutes. They are not meeting those attendance standards now. They've cut their own targets, and then they con people by saying, we're meeting the targets that we've already cut. It's a con on the people of London. You know it. Our job is to make sure the public understand that as well. When we saw the floods up and down the country, I saw David Cameron saying what a wonderful dark job public sector workers have done, what a fantastic job firefighters have done, and we heard the same last week after that terrible tragedy with a helicopter. Well I say this, we're sick and tired of being patted on the back, and we're sick and tired of being patronised by public school boys. Instead of patronising us, Put money into essential services and stop these cuts. It's easily done. I want to say a message. Thank you for everyone who's come along here today. But let's get one thing straight. This is just the start of this campaign. This is just the start of this fight. Every single one of us has to get back to work to talk to our watches, to talk to everyone we work with and to get out in our communities and to get the message across, putting forward the professional case because we know that cuts cost lives, we know that delays will lead to increased losses, more businesses destroyed, more homes destroyed, more people injured and yes, more people killed as a result of these cuts. That's what these people are discussing in that building behind us. And I have to say, if the chief fire officers of this country won't make the case for the fire service, I have to say they're not doing a very good job so far, then it's down to us, the professionals on the front line, to put that message across to defend our service on behalf of ourselves, on behalf of the communities that we serve. discuss every single option and yes this is early stage of this campaign but we have to discuss everything and that will mean thinking about if it comes to industrial action and it will mean thinking of other things one thing that strikes me is those fire stations don't belong to these people in here and those fire stations don't belong to Boris Johnson or David Cameron the people who paid and bought those fire stations are the people of London 
And it's now the people of London to decide what happens to their fire service. And I know if you ask them, they will not want their fire stations closed, just as they don't want Lewisham Hospital closed. And I say to the people of London, instead of allowing your services to be destroyed, go in, say these are our buildings, we're taking them over, and we're not allowing them to be closed. <laughs> for public services. What a complete lie! There is plenty of money in this society. But as Megan said earlier, it's in the wrong hands. Austerity is about robbing from you and your families and your sons and daughters and handing billions of pounds over to those people who created this mess in the first place. You know, on the 6th of April, on the 6th of April, they cut the top rate of tax from 50% to 45%. And it means that millionaires will get a handout from the Treasury of hundreds of thousands of pounds a year each. More money than you can dream of living on in a year. It'll be handed out as a check from the Exchequer. And the total cost of that is three billion pounds. That's what Osborne is handing over on the 6th of April to the richest people in Britain. And you know what it costs to run the entire UK fire service? Three billion pounds. So don't tell us there's not money to run fire services. Don't tell us there's not money to provide frontline fire and rescue service and fire stations and keeping those 12 fire stations open. Because it's a complete and utter lie. And we need to expose that lie every step of the way. I think everyone is moved when we see tragedies like the Lackanal House fire or the helicopter crash last week. And yes, firefighters do deserve praise for that. But let's face it, that's the job that you do every single day of your working lives. Whether it's responding to those floods or the bombs or the day in, day out 999 calls when people have fires or other emergencies in their house. That's what we do, and we're proud to do it. But we have the right, we have the right to demand the best resources to do it. If people are putting their lives on the line, we have the right to demand the best training, the best equipment, and yes, decent resources for our fire and rescue service. So don't patronise us. Put the money in. Keep those fire stations only. This is only the start of this fight, brothers and sisters. Go back to work. Talk to your workmates and prepare for a fight. Thank you very much. Yeah.